In this video, I am talking about F numbers, T numbers, and this lens. Yes, I am talking about the SLR Magic 50mm T 1.2 Cine lens. I got this lens from UK Digital for this review. I am not being paid by UK Digital or SLR Magic. This is not sponsored video and I'm not paid to say anything specific. So this is actually my personal and honest opinion about this lens. I have never actually used Cine lenses before. I could never justify the cost of the lens for just video. I am professional photographer and filmmaker and I do need lenses which do both photography and video. So for me, the practicality of the lenses, they have to do two jobs. These Cine lenses are designed for cinematography in mind. They are designed for filming. So I was always very curious what is all that fuss about. Let's let's try it and see you know how different this is from any other lens. Well firstly let's talk about the build quality of this 50mm lens. It comes from SLR Magic and uh, they do mounts for this is a Sony E mount but they do also micro four thirds and an X mount for Fuji. This lens particularly this 50mm has got 13 aperture blades which is absolutely incredible and that obviously affects how the bokeh looks. This lens is built like a tank. I can honestly say this is probably the best built lens I have ever held in my hand. It's designed to to last. You could probably throw it at the wall and it will bounce back in one piece. They are designed to be a working hard wearing lenses and you can tell from the moment you pick it up in your hands you just know that that's meant to last. Also, these lenses, the senior lenses, do have gears, both on the focusing ring and the aperture rings. They are designed for follow focus systems, so when you put it in a, in a cage or in a whole rig, you can attach the, the wheel. Hang on, actually, I've got one here. One like this, I had to build for my camera a mini, tiny mini rig. The camera goes on top of it, and uh, you can adjust the focusing with, with the ring from the side of the camera. The aperture ring is completely declicked, so there is no sound when you are turning it. It's designed for adjusting the aperture or darkening the picture while you're filming, so there is no sound, clicking sound when you're changing the aperture. The one thing with a build, which is quite annoying, that's a focus ring and the aperture rings, they got a hard stop at either end of the turn. So when you go to the end of the focusing ring, it makes a quite loud thud. Probably if you use it all the time, you would get used to. Also, you do have markers for the distance and the aperture, so you would know before you get to the end that you're getting there, but it does make a noise. This lens weighs 700 grams, uh, which is uh, not really that heavy, but it's also not very light. There is no internal stabilization built in whatsoever. Let's have a look into uh, how this lens performs. Unfortunately, I am like most of us at this time in a pandemic outbreak we are in a quarantine and self-isolating including me so my subjects to film or photograph with any review i'm doing at the moment are a little bit limited so i have taken it out into my garden and outside of my house and i have done these shots the first thing i have noticed with this lens actually filming with it apart from the fact that focusing is that easy it's very very accurate and precise is that this lens has got a lot of character there's literally no modern photography lenses which have got this much character i think it compares compares very closely to the Helios the 44 II I have reviewed before, the link is here, but the Helios lens is 40 years old, it's tiny, it's not meant to be used professionally. That this is full of character, like the vintage lens, like Helios lens, but in this super modern and slick package. A T1.2, this lens isn't sharp, it's no hiding it, this lens isn't sharp, but it creates something special. The edges are all blurred, there's a lot of chromatic aberration. It gets sharper once you start closing the aperture and you get to T2 and T4, the sharpness gets significantly sharper. But I also think when you go past T8 towards the T16, the smallest aperture opening, it gets a bit 
weird again, a little bit. But overall, Lens is actually very good. It delivers the images which are full of character. The imperfections of this lens actually, in my opinion, make it pretty perfect and in some way unique to SLR Magic Cine Lens. It just gives you that cinematic, beautiful, modern, vintage look. And on that note, you might ask, why is it T and not F like all, all lenses? T-stop stands for transmission stop. It's efficiency of transmission of light through the lens, which is the, the aperture. And it is a bit different, the measurement of it, than f-stop on the normal photography lenses because it is actually more accurate. And t is given by dividing the f number by the square root of the transmittance of that lens. Well, it's very difficult to find out what actually is the light transmittance of this lens, but doing some digging on Google, it seems like most of lenses are around 75%, maybe more, maybe less, definitely less than 100%. So to calculate the T number, I presume, this is my guess, pure guess, that they started with lens like this at the standard F numbers. And because it's a very wide aperture, I was thinking probably F 1.4 or maybe F 1.1. So if you actually take F 1.1, 1.1 and divide it by the square root of 0.75-75% of the light transmitting through lens, you get T 1.2. Yes, very boring and very geeky. I don't know actually know who actually cares about this, but that's how the T number comes about. This lens is certainly designed to be used at the wide apertures and your T settings are very, very accurate. And you can actually see it on the markings on the lens that the dif distance between T1.2 and a T2 is quite big. And then the distances between 2 and 2.8 and 2.4 and T8, they're actually getting smaller. So what it means when you're filming at the aperture of T1.2, maybe it's too much shallow depth of field and you want to close the aperture. There is a quite long way from T1.2 to T2 because it is actually a very accurate macro adjustment of that closing of the aperture. But that's how it works in my opinion. I'm not an expert. I'm not a mathematician either. And this is just kind of a common sense translation of what's happening with those T numbers against the F numbers. This is something which you don't see very often on the, on the reviews of the cine lenses. I'm going to show you some pictures taken with this lens because I still cannot understand if you do have a hybrid camera like a Sony E-mount, Sony a7 III or Sony a7S II, uh, why would you not want to take pictures with that lens as well? I do use a lot of vintage lenses and I do like working for the picture, so you have to actually work a little bit harder to get that sweet focus spot and the, the creamy bokeh. It's kind of more rewarding than any modern autofocusing lenses. And this is no different. Apart from the fact that it's heavier, bigger, more substantial and easier to use than, than most of vintage lenses, it does the same job. And I've actually enjoyed doing pictures with it, although it wasn't meant for that. This lens retails at 769 pounds here in UK. It's not super expensive, but it's, the same value as a 55 Zeiss f1.8 lens, which you can film with, and is perfectly capable of autofocusing on a7 III or a7S II. But this lens is meant for different type of usage. It's definitely for someone serious about filmmaking and someone who really wants that character, the bags of character this lens actually delivers. So it's not just about the shallow depth of field because you can't get that with a 50 millimeter prime lens or any prime lens is really uh, for the hybrid system but it's more about the character and more about the cinematic look this lens creates so it's definitely for someone who is big into filmmaking conclusion the conclusion is superbly built it's built like a tank it's definitely designed for a filmmaker in mind with the gears the markings on the lens they don't look like they're gonna rub out anytime soon 82 millimeter diameter filter, 700 gram weight. It's just kind of overall 
with the focal length, a very, very versatile prime lens focal length of 50 millimeter. It's a great package for anyone serious about filmmaking. So this is it from me. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, cameras, uh, lenses, reviews, and photography video talk, please consider subscribing. And see you next time. Do 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 do. I thought I forgot to record the sound. It's actually there. So, oof, panic over. I'm waffling a lot. So the T stop is. Don't even know. Again, I forgot what it is. I, I have made notes, but I can't read them without the glasses. Yeah. <laughs>